came a long way That's what the song say And I could do all things I could do all things Yeah, I could do all things Yeah, yeah I'm not afraid of the moment I'm not afraid I can't hold it I gotta show up Gotta get up in the morning I gotta do it for Kobe Lately I'm zoning Lately I know where I'm going Taking whatever controller Show me opponents Show me opponents I got a gift and I'm starting to own it Welcome back to another episode of Progressive Hustle. Today we got Savvy the Third. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, homie? I'm all right. I'm good, man. I'm feeling. I'm feeling all right. How's life treating you? All in all, all in all, I don't know. It's kind of balanced out. It's good and bad, but it's it's good overall. More good than bad, I hope. Kind of. Yeah, basically, because I'm I'm living. <laughs> yeah, I guess any day above ground is a good day to me, right? So, uh, what are you doing up here, bro? I don't know, man. I woke up and I, you know, I was in Portland. This shit crazy. I'm just playing. <laughs> nah, uh, nah, I'm out. Uh, I just, I just, I just, uh, I just popped up a trap kitchen weekend. Shout out to Spanking Him. You know, they had me perform at the uh, Roseland, the Roseland Theater. Uh huh. Yeah. You ever been out here before? I have, but uh, the show ended up getting canceled. So I've been out here, but I never performed out here. Oh, okay, okay. The show was canceled. How'd you like it? It was lit. It was like a movie, fool. Cause I like how it all happened, the details. Nigga, I missed two flights because bullshit. And then the last flight, nigga, it was like a buzzer beater. Left at eight o'clock. Got here at ten thirty. I go on at eleven. Yeah. We 20 minutes from the venue, the airport. Get to the venue, straight out the, I ain't even changed. What I wore on stage, nigga, I, that was what I wore to the airport. I, I wasn't in the plan. So get out the car, wait. Get out the car, G on stage, doing it up, G Perigo. And then uh, he up there for like 10 more minutes, boom, give me the mic. So I barely had time to just, <laughs> it was like a movie, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Boom, I pop out, they go crazy. That's what's up, bro. Where you oh, from? Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah. One more detail that really is important. Nigga, I got off the stage at exactly 12 o'clock, and that was the Man, come on, bro. On accident. No, it's not an accident. This shit's serious, man. It was meant to be. Right on time. For real. Right on time, dude. I said, what time is this? I said, 12 o'clock on the dot. I said, I can't make it up. Hell no. I can't make it up, no. No, that's <gasps> legit, bro. Uh, so where are you from, bro? I'm from Long Beach, Long Beach, California. Born and raised. Born and raised. What's it? What was it like growing up in Long Beach? Oh, um, like every other neighborhood, any other minority. Uh, but we were always different, you know. But you know, basically, it was just like any other. Hood. How much is is Long Beach different from the rest of LA, or is it uh, all pretty similar? It's similar in, in ways, you know. At the end of the at the end of the day, everybody got a shot, so. But it's definitely like that different sometimes, most of the time. Except for my gang, you know where I'm from. We look like we we get the utmost respect. I ain't gonna lie. What's the biggest difference that you think you didn't um, realize? Because. Because uh. You know, I don't know. It really get deep with the gang culture, so we ain't gonna even get in that. It's just different though, as far as um, I'm thinking about gang politics. My bad, I need to watch that out. But just like when it comes to this LA period, it is looked at like just things be like Long Beach, not LA. I ain't tripping off of that. I know niggas gonna say I'm from LA. Niggas that ain't from LA, you know what I'm saying? They gonna say I'm from LA, but niggas from LA gonna be like, That's, he from Long Beach. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause outside looking in, you don't even. You ain't gonna say Long Beach. All you know is at, nigga, L.A. Everything around it is L.A. County, but it ain't L.A. To anybody outside of L.A., it's L.A. Straight up, like they ain't gonna be like he from fucking Monte Carlo. I mean, uh, 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 El Monte, and you know what I'm saying? They gonna say he from L.A. He ain't from Southgate. He ain't from Carson. He from L.A. Nigga from L.A. gonna be like, you know what I'm saying? They gonna say that exact city. So that's that's a difference right there. Like you gotta just be from it to actually get it. At the end of the day. What was the type of shit you were into growing up? Uh, I always 
was a fuck up. Shit. What did you but say? I was always a fuck up. Like, school wise. But I was always a smart, talented kid with big dreams. I played football. But I was good as fuck. That was my dream at first. Then I got to high school. I was already deep in it. I got my feet wet when I was like in middle school, like around 11, 12, I started taking pictures, doing game signs and shit. You know, really seeing shit. I always been around that, but I really started knowing what it was and getting infatuated with it around middle school. But when I got to high school, by the time I got to high school, I was already officially from it. So I'm fully involved. And go to LP, go to camp. That's when you really, you know what I'm saying? You find out who you is as a, as a young nigga. What is LP in camp? Uh, juvenile Hall. What land did you in Juvenile Hall? I did robbery. Stick up. Armed. But because, like me, I'm the type of nigga, if I really do a nigga wrong, like, like intentionally, they did something, like something happened for, that triggered that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just wake up and say I'm about to go do a nigga wrong. Right. I'm going to do a nigga wrong because somebody done did me wrong. He might not have did me wrong for that person, but... Somebody did me wrong, and you just happen to be the bearer of bad news. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? right. So, like, I he might have done do something nigga, wrong like, too. Nigga, it happened because I was I was on the basketball team in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. Our first game is on November eighth. It's November sixth. Nigga, somebody stole my sidekick out my locker during practice. Nigga, I left school immediately and went up to Lake Wilmar with my pistol. I didn't have it at school though. I went to the trap to get it. I'm sure I stopped at the trap, went and caught the bus up to Lake Wilmore and waited for niggas in the back where Costco at. Caught me in there getting his bike. Got a brand new sidekick, Tony Hawk. What well, got up on him? Somebody got to get got. Somebody mm -hmm. got me. Boom, I go to jail because I stay in the area. I'm in there for like six months. Sick. Felt like six years. But yeah, that was the first. Uh, Little taste of jail, and then shit. After that, I kissed sports goodbye. But I, in there, like that's where I start first started writing and shit. I made my first song when I got out of camp. How old was you when you, you made your first song out of camp? Fourteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen, about to be fifteen. I'm like, yeah, I was like three months from fifteen. Boom, oh, and then kept making songs. Shit, I was having fun with that shit. Was you pretty good right away? Yeah, right away. My first song ever was Me and the Homies. That shit was hard. It was like a little local local hit. And then uh, I wrote the hook and told the homie he sound better saying it. So he said the hook. I wrote it. But my verse was always top tier. I always was vicious. Niggas comparing me to Wayne. <laughs> I, was sad. I was happy because that's the nigga that was, that was influencing me. Mm -hmm. Oh, was true. Yeah, man. What was uh? What were your influences in music? With the music? Yeah, like that made you really want to start getting Wayne, Car Wayne, music. for sure, Wayne. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jewels, but but man, I always loved music. I don't know, nigga. I just I love music. I got videos out as a, as a toddler, nigga, singing with the action figure like it's the mic. Mm -hmm. nigga, you feel me? I always been around music my whole life, though. My mama sing. My my pops do music and too. He do all that shit. He always have nigga, equipment and all that shit. So I don't know. This shit was destined for me. You grew up with your mom and your dad. Yeah. Same house. No. Nah. No. Nah. How were how were they growing up? Like were they pretty solid or was it as, a as far as what? Childhood? Uh, no, nah, I don't got. I mean, anything I went through that was traumatic was caused by myself. Okay, my so mom. it wasn't like you had a mom on drugs and yeah, a dad that no. was abusive. No, my dad didn't even my dad don't even game bang. Mm -hmm. But he from he from he from Compton though. But uh he was always in my life. You feel me? Uh my mom was always in my life. I used to go to my daddy's shit on the weekend, you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But they ain't I ain't, they ain't never like it wasn't no traumatic shit in between them. It wasn't, it wasn't none of that. But uh yeah, I just was fuck up, so I used to get my ass whooped. What What do you think it was that just was so intriguing to like being in the streets, like to you know what I mean? I was I was still around it. <clears throat> That's what I was still. We still live. I lived in the shed though the whole mm -hmm. time. I go to my granny house, when, which is which is my daddy house on the weekends, in the set. 
So I go from the set to the set. I'm growing up around this shit. When I go outside, when, we, when we're not around our parents and we go outside to play, nigga, and we with our friend uh, Monty from across the street, nigga, they is influencing us. They from the set. You feel me already? The, our parents don't know that. These who we hanging out with when we say we go outside to play. Mm-hmm. And we playing basketball, we with some gang members, nigga, and they influencing us. Yeah, that shit infatuating. I get a nigga. So, nigga, if that's all you see, yeah, that's, you gonna be from there for sure. Did you graduate high school? In jail. Okay, but you actually like actually got the diploma or just the GED? GED. Okay. Just got it. Mm. You know what I'm but I didn't know I wanted to be a rapper though, for sure. I didn't know that until twenty, like twenty. 12 when I started really, really, no, nah, no, nah, nah, like 2011, 2011. Probably the year after I got out of camp. You know what I'm saying? I got out of camp, nigga, April 2015. I mean, uh, 2010, I was 15. I mean, I must be 15. 2011, I, made, I was already paying for uh, studio time. And, mm, nice. Nigga, I was fully invested in it. <laughs> fully invested. And I was like, nigga, every single day I'm, I'm trying to get in the studio. Boom. Every day. Real. When I found a real studio, like a, it, was, it was like real equipment in somebody's house, and the nigga knew how to engineer, that's when my sound started getting way better. Like, boom, it just all happened. It was all meant to be. Nigga, I just met the nigga on Facebook, went to his house, I ended up, that ended up being my studio, nigga, like, and it's like a diamond in the rough. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, so I'm dropping EPs and videos, nigga, I'm paying for videos, all that shit. Nigga, I used to invest in myself, I still do. Nigga, for real. Got to, you have to, to forever. You can never stop. How long did it take from starting to like really, really start gaining momentum? Like where people really started recognizing you and hearing your uh, shit and like really keeping you like it, on the, it was, on the music uh, it track. It was always on the steady incline for real though, because when I first started, I had the support from my section, which was which it just so happened to be like the section in my city. You feel me? So. They see the whole section is on this and behind this, the city, they're going to get behind that too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even 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 though we got all these enemies, they see this, but there's nothing they can do about it because we feel me, we number one for a reason. The whole city going to rock with our wave as long as they not ops. You know what I'm saying? Even the ops low-key on the wave. So it's like once the city was on it, and uh, but then other niggas started getting cracking when I went to jail, when I, when I went to the pen. Cause I was I was like this close to getting signed. I was going up to Universal, nigga, see me posting uh, pictures and shit. Like I was fucking with DLC. He was about to give me a deal up there. We mm. this close to signing. You feel me? And then uh, I popped some Xanax, nigga, and I woke up in jail. Uh, I don't remember what I did, but I went to court, nigga. They talking about uh, home invasion and all kind of shit, nigga. But it went down to a robbery, a person present, nigga, and a fucking residential burglary. He gave me four years. I maxed it out with some. Fuck. The night, the night I'm supposed to go there, go go meet up with them niggas, meet up with Dr. Universal. <laughs> what a crazy story, bro. That sucks. The truth. I ended up really, like, doing the time. I so what was going to prison like for you? Shit. It was, in my mind, nigga, it was detrimental. It was like, damn, it, it can't be over this early. I was fresh 18. Just turned fucking 18, nigga, mm-hmm. in October. I mean, in, in September, and I went to jail in October. I caught the case October, and I bailed out. My first time ever hitting the county and all that shit. Mm. What was it like when you first hit the county? I mean, shit, I wasn't... It you weren't, like, like, scared like or nothing like that? Now you were with it no, already? No, I was already... already been in gladiator school. Okay, mm. okay, so you were kind so of... So it ain't too it. much... What, I'm going to see a grown man? Like, I already had in my head before I fought a grown man, nigga, that I could fight a grown I could fight anybody that, as long mm-hmm. as they not dead. That's, why, that's, why, that's how I grew up, nigga. That's why I'm never scared to fight nobody. I don't care. Right. I always told myself the worst that can happen is a knockout or something or a chip tooth. Nigga, I'm not going to die. That's what I always told myself. I'm not going to die. That's the worst that can happen. So I was never scared. That's what be getting niggas knocked out. They be scared. Mm-hmm. I was never scared. Nigga, you knock me out. I ain't going to be scared, though. I'm going to get up in there. On the set, just so happened I got a squabble, I be beating the shit out of niggas with that confidence. So yeah, in the county, nigga, I wasn't scared. On the set, I mean, you ain't finna, you ain't finna pick on me, you ain't finna do none of that. On the set, I'm really that. Period. We gonna get down. 
the going to prison for those five years, did that? Do you think that helped your craft at all? What my my, my writing craft? Yeah, just rapping, bro. You? That's that that uh, literally, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I wrote some of my most potent bars ever, nigga, right there. Like I'm talking about. I'll tell you songs right now. Like one of them nights, see him coming. All my nigga, except batter up. Another day, I wrote right there in the cell, nigga, on the side of the cell phone. It was to another beat, but I had a cell phone on the set. I mean, I wrote some potent shit right there, shit that I still can't touch on right now. Like, I can't catch that. I, I don't know. I just can't catch that. Uh, it ain't like that. That Them bars that I'm writing ain't, ain't that, but it's just that, that 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 spirit and that energy. I can't catch it because I'm not in that state of mind. That's not my environment. I was really in there going through that right then and there. Feel me? Like, so it's like, man, it was real. Going through it, all that shit. I wrote shit in the hole. Going through riots and all kind of shit. I got out and really kept the shit. I still got the man. That shit was real. I wrote down the plan and all that, bro. For real. That's I had the dope. plan and I did everything I wrote down. For real. That's good, bro. So you you, you wrote yourself some goals for when you got out. Some I shit wrote some steps. Think I wrote some real steps. To. Cause that, by that time I was already woke on on feel me law of attraction and just trying to get my energy right manifestation. I was woke on all that shit by that time. So. I really wrote that shit down and envisioned it, bro, and did exactly that. What I wrote down, that's it was a it was a plan, like a foolproof plan. Like uh, I came up with something. I was like, man, I really sat back and it was like, like nigga, I gotta do this. Like it gotta work. I and mean, I got three strikes, not two, three in one case. You got three strikes. I got three strikes. Explain that. Explain uh, the strike on, okay, thing. I, we were okay. Just on my control. On my it. controlling case. My controlling case was the. The one in Long Beach, they got me on robbery with a person present. That's residential burglary with a person present. That makes it violent. Mm -hmm. If it's just regular regular residential burglary, it's nonviolent. You can get half time. That's what mm -hmm. most niggas, they usually get. Like, usually I was supposed to get four years, but I could uh, cut it in half and do, you feel me, uh, 30%. At, I mean, 33% on the uh, fire camp and be home in a year and a half. But, nigga, it was violent. 85%, I got to do damn near all that. You feel me? Yeah. Not to mention, you go, nigga, two cell phone write-ups, you maxed out. Yeah, two cell phone yeah. write-ups. Niggas, that's no get back. You can't get that time back. Usually, you get a write-up for some tobacco or something, you get, you get them other uh, days back. But a cell phone, they give you 90 days, and you can't get it back. You feel me? Those, that's three months added on. You feel me? So... Nigga, I got three, four cell phone write-ups, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, and then I had, uh, they give me two years for the um per, uh, robbery with the person present. That's the most, you, you go know, two, four, six. They gave me the low turn for the robbery. Then they gave me the residential burglary, the low turn. That's four years. Boom. They couldn't double me up or nothing because I had no strikes. Then I had a case in Compton that they brought up. Nigga, they, got, they gave me two strikes. I'm like, shit, if I get out, I just need one more strike, and that's over with. Mm -hmm. They can give me a strike, right? I could take a strike and, and hurry up and go to the pen. I want to hurry up and go to the reception. So I get to the pen, get up out the county. I just took a strike in Compton, took that strike. Fuck it. Learn it. I ain't finna keep going back and forth to court. Not yeah. from Supermax. <laughs> they got to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, they got ain't doing that. Give me a strike. So I just took a strike. Basically, like, I, I still got two strikes. I got three strikes. It's still the same thing. Mm. But it's just, it just looked that different. If I say I got three strikes, I'm like, fuck. But if I say I got two strikes, fuck. You, like, one more, it's over, regardless. Right, right, right. So, yeah. What happens when you get out of prison? This time? Yeah, the last time, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, because did you do this? Did yeah, you I, just, I just... Five went, years? I did five years, and then I just... I, not just, but I got out of prison for 15 months. I did 15 months. I had to turn myself in for a hit and run. Oh, fuck. And I just got out in January. The beginning of January, January eighth. So oh, okay. I've been, I've been, I ain't, go, I ain't never going back to jail now. All right, well let's let's go back then. So so after the five years, oh, after the five years, yeah, boom. So what happens? You get uh, out. You got goals written down. I get out, nigga. I'm already. I don't know what it was, but when I hit that three yard, and it was lovely like that, cause I boosted my points up and I, I tow fire camp up. I was mm -hmm. in fire camp most of my turn, but I towed that up for three years, nigga. That one year that I, I was on that three yard. Nigga, I don't know what it was, but something got up in me. And I remember when my flow started changing and 
that's because I had a cell phone, nigga, and I'm in that cell all day long. I ain't got to go on the grade and go cut trees and all that shit like I did at fire camp. At fire camp, you feel me? But, mm -hmm. nigga, I write the most craziest shit right there in that cell for that year. Boom. I get out. The day I get out, my Instagram delete. I'm posting freestyle videos, getting my fans up, telling them I'm finna come home. The day I get out, my shit delete. Oh, my God. I want to be so sad. I had like 20,000 followers, organic, mm. nigga. But I was, nigga, I was home, though. I was, I was home. That was the only thing that overpowered that whole feeling. Nigga, I was sick, but I was home, so I'm happy. Nigga, boom, I, the Instagram I got now, I said, shit, nigga, I'm about to get this motherfucker crack. I'm going to start fresh. Fuck it. Made one that day. Yeah. Never look back. I dropped my first song. Uh... October 21st, so a month after I got out. I got out the day before my birthday. My first day waking up in four years on the street, nigga, it was my birthday. Damn. Real movie, bro, on the set. I swear to God, I can't make it up. They had on, it's on, it's on, it's on file. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, so yeah. But I wrote that down, though. I said, I'm gonna drop a video. That's a freestyle, all bars, gas up, tell them I'm coming. I like wrote that down in parentheses, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tell them how I'm coming. And then I put uh, uh, only available on YouTube, underlined it. Only available on YouTube so they have to watch the video. That was like, I was in my plan. They got to watch the video to listen to the song. Boom. I said, after that, I'm going to grow. Like, I'm for sure going to, like, I'm banking on this shit. I'm like, I'm for sure going to get a buzz off this shit. You feel me? So then the next step, you know what I'm saying? There's no, if I don't get a buzz, I didn't have no plan B. You feel me? I'm like, I'm going to get a buzz after that. Psh. Start fucking doing features, killing it off. Wrote that down too. You know what I'm saying? I did the same thing. Doing little local features with the little popping people. You know what I'm saying? Kill them all. After Were that, you dropping any projects at this time or doing any shows or anything like that? Oh, yeah, that? I was doing shows. I was opening up for niggas. I was like, I'm just telling you. I was to, like I said, nigga, when I met him, I was opening up for Greedo. O3 Greedo. O3 Greedo. Okay. Open up. I, like most of Greedo shows, that he did while I was still there, I opened up for him. Nice. Sure, because I was, I was I'm locked in with the games, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was easy call every time. Open it up, but that's when nigga, nobody knew who the fuck I was. Nigga, the crowd used to just stare at me. I'm up there going crazy. They just looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> what was the song that really like? That that's the only song I was performing, the song, the freestyle song. Oh, really? I was performing oh, so that, you just that made every up. show, but it was, it was lit though. Right. It was it. So you just go there and minutes. perform one song? One and song, nigga, and I'm gone. When did you drop your first mixtape or album? Uh, when, um, I dropped Snowboy. After, wait, no, I'm tripping. I dropped All Eyes on 3, the original All Eyes on 3. I dropped that in April. But that was after I didn't have, no, I dropped that in April. I ain't, even, I ain't even dropped another day yet. I ain't dropped, uh, I dropped See Him Coming, that's it. Like the song that, that really got me going. See Him Coming was, I'll drop that February. Oh no, I did drop another day. I dropped another day on a Saturday, that's March. Then I, and a month after that, I dropped All Eyes on Three. Boom. It was an EP, it was only seven songs. I dropped uh -huh. Batter Up way after that. Batter Up wasn't even on there. I was just, and I, another day really got me booming. I ain't gonna lie. That's, that was the song. So you started to really crack off before Batter Up came out. What? Batter Up just t the, took it over the top. Another day really had it going. I ain't gonna lie. That's what got it going. That's what got that's what got whack attention. That video, exact, no, no, no. One of them nights, the freestyle video in the car, that's what got whack attention. Mm -hmm. And that's when he hit me up. And that's, that, that video was the reason for all that. But, uh, Another day, nigga, everybody seen that. Because I, I used to have a video. I used to do it where I have a video freestyling that shit. You know what I'm saying? In the car or in the parking lot, something, doing that. Like over the beat, live. You feel me? You know them freestyle videos. And then I make the video to it. Like doing the same thing, but actually doing it on the song and all that shit. You feel me? So I was on top of the street sign. Another day, I knew they was going to be like, what the fuck? That's regular. Like I got pictures on top of the street sign nigga, when I was a young nigga. But I knew they was. Nobody never did that. You feel me? I'm comfortable chilling, spitting on top of the street sign, like hot. It looked like Photoshop on the set. So you know, I knew they was going to be like, what the fuck? I'm on top of the street sign, going crazy. How'd you come up with Batter Up? 
know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy. Nobody ever asked me. But yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do that. But um it was about somebody. I'm sure it was. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but it. It was about somebody, but I ain't gonna say who. So you were just in a mad mindset and came up with the one. I wrote, sorry, I wrote that my auntie Sion. I wrote that my auntie Sion. We used to thug out of in the passenger seat with the blower under it. You know what is that nigga? Everybody got out the car, stayed in there. Oh, the day of the day, I'm in the, at my granny house on mm-hmm. her side, in the passenger seat with that beat on, AC blowing hard in summertime. It's like the end of May. I got one person on my on my mind. Oh shit! Damn. I'm on the ass. That video is pretty lit. I'm on the ass. That was that was nobody knew. We was having a baseball game against the grapes. That was the first one that kicked all of them off. I ain't gonna lie to you. And then, but nobody knew I was shooting a video. Nobody. I ain't tell nobody. I was like, yeah, I'm going to the game, but I ain't tell nobody I'm shooting a video. You know what I'm Until you showed up. Until I showed up with the cameraman. What? It was a vibe. Yeah, no, nah, it looked like it was. It was a vibe. That's how the, that's how it was originally without the cameras. It was a vibe. Yeah, that's crazy. That was bro. the first one, nigga. It was what? The whole shit he popped out. It was a vibe. Nigga, I pop out with the Doc Martens and the gloves on. Hot as fuck. Nigga, <laughs> 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 Ah, I'll be looking at that video now like, what the fuck? Nigga, what the fuck was I on? on How'd set? you develop the style, your rapping style? Like, how did you come up with that? Because it, it's a unique it one, you know what shit. I mean? It's not, it's not like everybody else's, you know? Yeah. It's got its own its, its own shit to it. Shit, man. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just what I came up with. I don't know right. how I came up with it. I ain't, like, specifically, like, like, like intentionally say I'm out of... I don't know. But, yeah, I did do it intentionally. Obviously, I don't know shit. Right, but right, I don't right, know, right. shit. I don't know how I came. It just came, though. That's, like, you feel me? I'm happy. That's what make me happy. That's the beauty in it. Me telling myself, like, that's what keep me in love with this shit. That's mm-hmm. my main focus, really, when it comes to this rap shit. Stay stay with the passion. I got to keep my passion. Without right. the passion, you don't, passion bring it all. If you really got passion for something, that's when you really love something, nigga. You, you feel me? You're going to make time for that shit because you love it. You know Have you been touring a lot? Uh, I've, I've been on a few tours. What was your first tour? With Warren G. How, did, how was that? Was that a cross-country tour? Yeah, that shit was amazing. I think that's when you know, I told them I ain't going nowhere without my two dogs. My two niggas, they got to go everywhere with me. If, if you got a spot for me, these two niggas got to come. You know what I'm so I'm on tour with the homies, nigga. With my brothers, nigga. We on real tour. That's when I met Kendrick. All the shit. Like, we, we went everywhere. P.O. call, I need to see you tomorrow. I immediately fly back. They wouldn't just let you slide even though you were Not then, because they didn't know who the fuck I was. Now... Nigga, they know who I am. I tell them, nigga. I need, I need, all I need is their permission to go out the state. I can't go out the country, nigga. I can't. I could get a passport. I can't use it though. Mm-hmm. Where was your favorite place that you've been so far? New York. Oh hell yeah! What was that like going to New York for amazing. the first time? I love New York, bro. I love it out there. I see both sides: the corporate side. And I got a hood out there. Nigga, it's an insane crip in New York, a real, like, yeah. Oh, oh wow. shit. And they love me. They love, they, bro, they don't play about Savi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tell you, what, boy, you better make, man, nigga. My New York boys don't play about me. I'm just saying, they going, man, they love you out there. They have me walking in the middle of the street, 50,000 niggas behind me. Damn. And that, that, I just that came from out the, there. Man, I love it. That's dope, bro. That's dope. It. They treat a nigga right. What do you got coming up next? What is like the the plans for for you? Mm, I'm about to shit, man. I'm I'm definitely like stepping out my element that everybody used everybody used to see me in. I'm stepping out that whole like I'm always gonna be me, but like I owe it to my craft and my. Um, my real music side to really become who I'm supposed to be as as much as my potential let me, you know what I'm saying? Reach that with the music. Like I got to like really come, not different, but 
because I always came different. But it's just like I'm purposefully not getting too gangster on them because it's like, you know, they put a shield over that. I mean, a roof over that, not a shield. Right, 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 right. You don't want to scare I'm, I'm trying to be limitless, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't yeah. trying to be, I don't want to have no roof over me. I don't want it to be no limit I could go with this shit, you know? So, uh, like, I know it start with the music and what I put out. Mm-hmm. If I want that, I, I got to be what I want them to yeah, want yeah. me to be or see me as. So, like, with this music, it's like, it all just all coming together. It's like, you know, I don't want to talk too much about it. I just want to let the music speak for it. I don't want to pump it up too much. I just want, I want it to be like something fresh. You feel me? Like when they first discover artists, like this shit is dope, like everything. And it's not no gangster shit. It's some, it's a vibe. You know what I'm saying? But you can feel that shit because you're going to feel my pain. You go, you don't have no choice. It's going to draw you in like a magnet. When you listen to this shit, you're going to feel that shit. Mm-hmm. Straight up. You're going to feel it. You have to. You been to any other shit besides uh, music? Uh, like, like you know what I mean? Like that you you're trying to like uh, make money. Oh yeah, on, you yeah, know what yeah I mean? no. Do as a profession, I'm, I'm side hustles, kind of full I got time the hustles. Team Sabi Foundation. What's That's that? like my nonprofit, nigga. Every every holiday, as much as I can, and I go do it right. You know what I'm saying? But I do it like not even holidays. I do it randomly. I'm a spontaneous person. You feel me? I'm a Libra, bro. But I'm a genuine nigga. So I like to just. Uh, I already reached a lot of my goals. You feel mm-hmm. me? And I went through the. So I, I done been through the most triumphant, triumphant shit I'm going to go through. And I lost my mama at the same time. So that make it bittersweet because my mama was my best friend. Damn, so I've been bro. through the most tragic shit in my life, I feel like, and the most triumphant. At this point, and I'm so young, it's like, what's next? But I got to stay positive. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in a mindset right now that people would think is I'm supposed to be, you know, just dark. But I'm a light person. That's who I am. Even in my darkest time, this is my darkest time, bro. I ain't gonna go through nothing more tragic than losing. Just, How long ago did you lose your mom? In March. You feel me? I got out of January. I lost my mom for like almost what, two what, months. What happened with her? She died in her sleep. Oh, okay. Unexpected. No, oh, yeah, they didn't I have no clue. You know? So, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Me too, bro. Yeah. I, now, but I lost my mom too. Oh, yeah, yeah, man, it's no good, bro. It's the worst. Yeah, no, it sucks. The it really does suck. People take that shit for granted, bro, but uh, right. you got to appreciate every second that you have with somebody. Nah, for real. No cap. Yeah, man, shit. Yeah, man, so, you know, bro, uh, like in deep, deep down, you know, I am a different person. I'm a different nigga. I am. Mm-hmm. Emotionally. Nigga, like, you know, but I ain't going to let that show too much. Right. I ain't gonna lie, people don't even, nowadays people don't have the chance to even see if I'm I'm gonna show it or not. I don't be around nobody, bro. I don't hang out with niggas. I'm gonna show solo. I'm out by myself right now. Your mom at least got to see your progress. Right. What you was doing. I, no, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Since since my mom left, bro, like I've been the biggest, like the biggest I've ever been. I'm making the best music I've ever made. Every time I make some hot shit, she was my number one fan. I think about her. She a love this shit. But I mean, before before she passed, I mean, you was on a on a big rise, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she passed so, right before my album dropped. Right. So yeah, she she was at least you know what I mean, seeing that you. Were yeah, no, nah, for sure. I, I, that's what that's what kind of bring me peace with this yeah, shit yeah. because I tell myself I at least got to change my mom' life and show her a different life mm-hmm. than she's ever seen. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because I, I, niggas know, nigga. I immediately got my mom's and pops straight. As soon as I touched any check, nigga, like, got them straight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I like that. But at the same time, I know the the, the potential it could have it went to. Because I know the money I'm finna touch, it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I know my mama, she was going to reap the immediate benefits of that. And that's the person who I go to immediately when I have any type of accomplishment or whatever, problem too. Go to her first. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I got pride in, in telling her first. Make sure she know first immediately before anybody. It's my best friend, for real. Talk to her every day of my life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, boom. Everything is bittersweet. Nigga, I can become president. Nigga, it's, I'm going to love it, but it's going to immediately be cut to a short end because, nigga, I can't tell my mom. 
That's, I'm going to think about that before every, I mean, after every accomplishment, a Grammy, everything. Bittersweet. Life bittersweet for me forever. What's next? You got any siblings? Just a baby sister. Same mom, same dad? What? No. Same mom, that's it. She got a different dad, but she had no daddy. So my mom was really all she had. For real. How old is she? 20. Oh, okay. So you be looking out for her? What? Hell yeah, she just had twins. Shout out oh, to Jyla. Wow. Shout out to Jyla. Man, that's the crazy, ugly bro. Ass. So you got yeah. a lot on your plate, bro, taking care of your family and shit like that, bro. Everybody going do, though. Through, uh, you know, that's loss. just what I'm going through. Yeah. I don't use that to, you know, I don't use that in no type of negative way. That's what, but it helped me. My situation helped me uh, look at other people's situations in a, in a, in, in a different light. If you could go back in time and give yourself some advice, what would you tell yourself? I tell myself, damn, I tell myself, uh, damn, man, I can't just say anything, hold on, I tell myself, um, there's so much I tell myself, for, for real, but I gotta keep it short, I just tell myself to just, just do what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Whatever happened, that's what's supposed to happen. Cause I'm thinking about like shit that I tell myself not to do because I know the, the treacherous shit I didn't been through that I took myself through if I would have just, you know what I'm saying? Little shit turned to big shit. But then I'm like, it all was for a reason. Every single effect, it had another effect on something else. You know what I'm saying? Every action had a reaction. Every single one. So if I did one thing wrong, it might put a, a curve in something and something wouldn't have been right. this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all that shit led up to, nigga, all shit was mixed in a pot and boom, I, this came out. Mm -hmm. Shit, nigga, who I am today. What advice would you give the younger generation? People, uh, who, you know, beneath you, you know? Um, I know they're going to tell them, like, dream big and all that shit. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, dream big. But... You got to just know that like, shit don't go as planned all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's all right, though. It's all right for shit not to go as planned. You feel me? Whatever happened for you, you know, that's what it is. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what I tell them. Like, just know. Don't be unsure of nothing. If that's what your reality is, that's what it is for you, period. So find a way to love that. Straight up. Find a way to just love with who you is. Straight up. Love who you is. Don't try to love like nothing else because it's what they love. But, you know, everybody got a different pathway. Yeah, for real, bro. Is there any last last things you'd like to say before we get up out of here? Yeah, man. Fuck a nigga. Me, I'm fucking no, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> you said what? No, uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, uh, man. I'm tired, bro. I'm babbling. Like my son, that nigga be tired just babbling. Yeah, uh, that's how I feel right now. Bro. I'm so exhausted. Just saying it's random funny. shit. Like, what? Go to mm. sleep. Man, I'm tired as hell. Nah, but uh, I'm finna drop, you know, another album. Three Against the World. Y'all go get that shit. Y'all gonna go get it. Y'all gonna hear about it. So I ain't got no worries. You know, Three Against the World, though. It's gonna be the hottest, coldest shit ever in the world at the time and forever, you know? So. Shout out to the Crips and the Wolves, dead homies. We all sorry for life. Fuck the ops, dead homies. I'm just playing, cuz. Let's make some money, man. Where we at? Uh, progressive hustle. My hustle progressive. Your shit, your shit, your shit progressive? Progressive hustle, yeah. You know I said your shit progressive, though? My hustle progressive. Yeah, hell yeah. Shit, my shit. Yeah, yeah, fuck, I mean, man. If you only knew my shit. No, you know your, shit, your shit progressive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has to be progressive. <laughs> Ain't nobody got a regressive hustle or a stagnant Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nah, niggas you know do, though. I mean? niggas, nobody got, no, niggas, be, niggas be having stagnant hustles. My shit Hell progressive. Not. I ain't gonna lie. Hell Hell yeah. no, I thought no. about it. It's progressive. Nah, you, if, if your niggas shit be having stagnant, stagnant hustles. A lot of shit if, stagnant. If your shit's stagnant, 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 you gotta learn how to be progressive, bro. You gotta do something, bro. You gotta. Hey, you know what I just thought about? We've been talking out. for like two hours. We were supposed to be doing it for like 20 minutes. It's crazy. Now, we've been talking for about... 
I'm just playing. 40 like, minutes, man. We've been talking playing. for a lot longer than I thought yeah, we were nah, going to, bro. We, but I appreciate though. your time, it bro. It was genuine. On the and, show, and, it's regular. Yeah, where can they find you at? Everywhere they listen to music. For real. You know, on the top of Long Beach with a crown on. You know, uh, Spotify. Really go to my Spotify. I need my listeners to get cracking on Spotify, man. That's where the money at. You find me on Spotify. So I'll be there with three eyes, number three, baby. You know what I'm saying? All right, homie, man. I appreciate your time. Thanks for fucking with it's us. It's time to go. Yes, sir. Oh. You got more to say? Nah, I mean, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate you, bro.